Hi YouTube, it's Mark from Hover Dog Brewery. Welcome to a brew day, yes. Whatever day this goes out, home brew weekly, whatever. So I've not brewed since 17th of November. Uh, and that was that um, zombie dust which I drank up because it was very nice. So, what are we doing today? Built Tintinet, downloaded a hot ponious Union clone. And then I changed it because that's what I always do, right? I've got loads of brewing books, loads, and I sort of buy them, flick through, I don't really read much of it, and then that's it, they sit on the shelf. Loads of recipes. In fact, I've got an e-book somewhere, and that's got some like, that's like 500 recipes in. I'll have to dig that out and have a look. Anyway, I'm doing all my beers, right, are all really hoppy, and I thought, I want to make a sort of traditional British bitter, you know, not really bitter, just a bit more malty. A um, bit more, probably thicker, thicker bodied. So I, I expressed my desire to brew this to Mrs. Other Dog, and she went, "Great, a boring beer then." So what I'm going to do today is brew this Optimus thing. Hoponius Optimus. I keep thinking Optimus Prime. It's like, no, no, that's that's a different beer, right? That's not this one. So it says Hoponius uh, Union Clone, but it's it's not because it's actually a lager. Uh, style of beer, so I'm just going to change it and I've, I've changed it a bit. Put simply, it's going to be Pell Malt, some Munich, uh, some Crystal or uh, Caramel Malt, so I've not decided what to use yet. I'll just find what I've got, throw it in. And then Bittering Wise, my favourite Magnum, because it's nice and cheapish and works very well. Uh, and then Centennial, uh, there's a Whirlpool with Citra, and then there is some Dry Hop, dry hops with Centennial and Citra. Quite a lot actually, uh, even Flame Out's 35 grams of Citra and then uh, the dry hopping is 26 each of Centennial and Citra dry up for 7 days so that's going to be a really in your face uh, beer isn't it, um, IBU's, I can't remember what it was now but it's 6 or something I think like wow, so yeah, let's see what it comes out like Strike Water's on uh, just heating up on the old uh, small pot, small batch again, not the big one like I promised, big brewery, small batch. So yeah, uh, that's it. Last thing, yeast. Because this is a lager style, it used a liquid yeast and I'm not using that. Uh, I've swapped it for a, an ale recipe design. So I'm going to use either, I thought USO5, but I want to try different yeast. So it comes out with, so I've got the cross, my loof. Uh, yeast which is the um, US pale ale so I'm going to try that because it is a pale there's a bit of crystal in but it's going to be pretty pale I think yeah so I've not actually tried one of these before first time so it comes out right strike water's on so it'll be one of them crappy brew days where I just do the same thing every time find the recipe I'll try and be clever and stick that in like a document you can read if I remember, which I probably won't. YouTubers, this is a, a lesson in uh, what not to do. Um, I'll, uh, to keep the grains at the right temperature in this quite cool shed, uh, I left the induction heater on uh, on position one, um, which was actually just keeping the temperature with the lid off. So uh, I put the lid on, okay, just to keep the temperature in, but I left it on P1. Now I went away for a few minutes, which just turned out to be half an hour, and I've come back and the bag was all bloated up inside I uh, put the temperature sensor on and the you know, thermometer and it said 96 so basically it was uh, literally boiling so I pretty much wrecked all these grains uh, 
I don't know, I might just uh, let it cool down um, and then leave it like this for mashing in. I don't know what to do. Um, yeah, so I might have to start to brew day. I've got enough grains, but yeah, what not to do. Okay, so you can see I've screwed up. Listen to everyone. Keep your eye on your mash. So, Google it, looked into the homebrew forums and some people say it'd be fine. Uh, it won't be scorched because it's in the pot. You know, it's not going to be that bad. The grains are looking a bit darker than they were. I don't think it's, it's caused any major damage, but of course, the higher mash temps will result in lots more unfermentable sugars. Um, so what I'm going to end up with is probably a multi beer of low ABV. You really don't know at this point what it's going to be like until you fermented it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to risk it. I've got the temps down to 67. These grades are quite cool. I'm going to throw these in. Okay. So the mash originally should be in 70 degrees before you you dough in. So I'm going to throw in another 430 grams of Maris Otter. Um, if the ABV is fine with that, what's in there now, and I just make it higher, well, you know, no big deal, is it? Just be uh, a bit more alcoholic. So yeah, we're at 67.3. If I stir it up, it'll come down a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is uh, throw this in and then continue the brew day. So you'll have to find out in three weeks' time if I've wasted some money and time or whether it's the best beer I've ever made. I sound like Electro Broom. Electro Boom. With his full brain directed fire. Go look at him on YouTube, he's a great guy. <laughs> Get on with this. Well, we're half an hour in. Still holding at 65. So, uh, yeah, quite good. I'm happy with that. It did say to, uh, and I, I messed this up from day one, from start. I just sort of, I don't know, wasn't prepared. So, uh, it actually says to mash in here at 70.6, of course. I looked at it, and went, oh, look, 64.4. So, I'm a dick, right? Anyway. So uh, yeah, we, we got to like 80 or 90 something for 95 even, so that's like, no, it's not going to be right, is it? Um, so no, it's been in for a while, half an hour, it's now uh, holding at 65-ish, so it's pretty good. Um, just for the next step, add a bit more water at boiling water. Hmm? <whistles> uh, yeah, 99.9, .9, so boiling water. Hmm, right, so it's just step mash, five minutes step mash. So I'm not doing the 90, well actually I'm probably doing the 90 minutes because I'm going to do for a, another 30, so uh, yeah. So there you go, I messed up and I've really sort of come back and I still hope it's all right. Yeah, as you focus in this. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll get the magnum out. Now my eyes aren't focusing, so I don't the cameras are not. Magnum, Centennial and some Citra. Let's get the hops out. Okay, gonna add some sparge water, so I've got the big pot. Oh, oh, oh gosh, that's huge. To the vicar. None to the vicar, get it right, mate. All right, stick this on to. Uh... Oh, it still thinks it's hot. Right, come on. So, this is the sparge water going on. Right, destructions. Destructions. So, this should be 75.6. 75.6 75.6 and it's currently a lot lower just mark the house it's 48 50 nah, 49 so what we'll do we heat up the barge water now and then we'll uh, yeah Stick it one big pot now. I've already added a bit more water because I added more grains. So it just says to uh, put the water in, seven litres. I've got ten in here. And uh, bring the water up to 14.2, ready for the boil. So uh, we're just going to heat this up. So uh, back in a minute. Now, because I added more uh, grains, added more water because it really was quite dry. So all the figures will be out now on the recipe 
So what I've got to do now is fly sparge. So I've got the water up to temperature, sparge water. So all I'm going to do now is a fly sparge. Um, because I don't know my volumes, I am going to fly sparge as well. I'm not going to batch it. Oh, this is going to go everywhere, isn't it? Like it always does. I need to get a conical one of these, really. So there is more grain in here than there should be, as well. Doesn't help. So, oh, bloody hell. Well, there you go. It's a, a nasty brew day. I've got wort everywhere. It's all of my bloody shirt. So, oh, bloody hell. Oh, bloody hell. camera all of my bloody shirt great oh well smells for the wash right let's get this bag out That's 12, 12, 12. Need a bit more, a bit more. Well, YouTubers, that was a mess. It's all down my shirt, as you can see. Yeah, it's all down my shirt. So that's two things that have gone wrong. What next? Right, okay, we've got up to 14 litres anyway. Um, it's 14, looks 14. I can't tell me things. Yeah, 14. So what we need to do now is um, bring it to a boil. So uh, the heat is on, the, the induction plate. Put it on for now, gets it temperature quicker. And then we're going to add uh, the first hops at boil start, which is uh, 3.72 grams of magnum, obviously the bittering hops. Uh, so I've got those uh, measured out in a little bag. Not a muslin bag, this is like a... I don't know, it's a... Hmm, I think it's a nylon bag. Yeah, I might just not use this. Anyway, for what there is, I might just throw them bloody things in. So we'll bring it to a boil and then um, start adding the old hops. Well, I've just done a pre-boil uh, gravity check and it's coming out at 10.43 so clearly the conversion has worked. Question is did I have to add, did I have to add that extra 500 also grams. I'm suspecting I didn't. This is pre-boil. Prediction. Prediction. A beer smith. I can never read these in fast. Where's the pre-boil? Did it actually say somewhere? It does say on here somewhere to be honest. Oh, estimated pre-boil 10.36. I'm on 10.43. Oops. So yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what it comes out like. I didn't really want to get a, a really strong beer, so I'll write down 10.43 on here and uh, the boil is on. Nearly. Just about at the hot break.
Two YouTubers. I've chilled it down in the house. Oh, added a bit more water to the volumes that Beer Smith told me to. So let's just get it into this fermenter now. There will be some hoppage floating around in here. I'm not filtering it today. I've done me filter it. I'll just try and be careful at the end. You can see there's a lot of debris in here. Yeah, I could have siphoned it off, but well, that's one of those things, isn't it? So I've uh, star sand the fermenter. Just see all the hops in here. It's gonna not ideal today. Now, I'm going to stop there because it was getting really, really thick at the bottom. Well, you can see hops. I didn't have a third hop bag. Right. So, we're quite low. The uh, temperature wise, we're almost there. So, we on. Hmm, 25.2. You can see that the light. 25.3. Okay, well, 25 and a half, let's call it. Seems to be going up and up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it an hour, come back and I'll pitch the yeast. Um, I'm not going to show that on camera. Um, I'll be using the uh, Cross My Loof US Pale Yeast today. Um, instructions, five gallon, well I'm actually not using that. Rehydrating a cup of sterilised, yeah I'm not doing that either. Uh, aerated, yeah, it's been aerated. Doesn't actually say what to pitch the temperature. Oh, fermenting 18 to 25, so it's about right. Give it another sort of 10 minutes or so, and that'll be down. I can pitch it. Well, another brew day over. Um, it's come out really high actually. I was surprised. So, the, the screwed up mash didn't seem to have affected it. Maybe some more. Uh, unfermentables in there so it may come out malty we won't know till it ends but it's come out at 10.51 um, which is really good actually it's a lot higher I think I aimed it's like 10.46 I can't see paperwork right um, so I'm surprised now I did add the extra 500 grams in there I'm wondering what it'd be like if I'd not done that but hey it sounds all right 10.51 I don't know what it is about five percent ish, five point one. I don't know. We have done the old uh, look up calculation thing. So, as I do at the end of my videos, let's do a good, bad, and the ugly. So, um, good. Well, <laughs> it's turned out a decent percentage, and it hasn't messed up uh, with me boiling the mash. Okay, that's a good. Um, the bad, <clears throat> the mash. <laughs> me boiling the mash screwed it up, and then also I spilled loads of beer down my shirt or wort when I was trying to uh, drain and sparge so that wasn't good um, the boil went well as well so that's, that's a good thing um, and the ugly well you know nothing went absolutely off the rails and I had to throw it in down the dry did he so nothing really ugly so it's been a good brew day let's see what this one comes out like um, you saw in the video there I, put, I actually didn't filter the, the work going into the fermenter I normally do through a grain bag it's not going to make a lot of difference because they're really fine particles um, the two lots of centennial were leaf and the citra was uh, pellet and the pellets break down to really fine and they often go through the filter what I should ideally is I should have a, a tap on a brew pot but I don't bother it's a small batch so just means it might be a little bit more in your face Right, well, that's it. What's today's date? 26th of January, and it's 1847. It's been a longer day because I messed up. 
So I'm going to call it quits here, go in, have a sit down. This is Mark from Hoverdog Brewery, signing off. And as always, stay thirsty. <laughs>